is uh, Jesus coming across in a woman with the issue of blood. Uh, we know the scenery. She comes up to Jesus and she uh, touches him and Jesus gets stopped. And it seems like for Jairus, he's prolonging the service. It seemed like it was postponed for him. It seems like it was delayed because Jairus had Jesus coming with him. But in the midst of Jesus handling the situation with the woman with the issue of blood, we see the men come from the house of Jairus and they come to Jairus and say, Jairus, your daughter has just pronounced dead. Your daughter is done. It's over. You might as well just call it quit. But we understand here, the Bible said they came from the house of Jairus. What is it then that when I have to deal with a private situation, but now my private situation now on public display. Now everybody come after me. Now I don't have to deal with it by myself, but now I got to deal with all the naysayers dealing with my situation. Now I got to deal with all these people, critics, giving observations and opinions of what's going on in my life. Now I got to deal with folks inside my house. Y'all know about it. Ain't no worse hurt than church hurt. I got people in the same house as me talking about my situation instead of praying for me. They wait all their breath, critiquing and criticizing me. And now I got a private problem on public display. Now everybody looking at me and just trying to destroy my witness. And I'm trying to do all I can, but I got to deal with folk talking about my situation. The men came from the house and said, your daughter is dead. I think they have the nerve, mother. They have the nerve to say, why bother with him anymore? It disturbs me why the enemy will always say, why bother with him anymore? Well, sit up here, I believe I testify. I bother with him. Uh, I bother with him from Jerry's house. Why I bother? It's because late in the midnight hour, when there was nobody else there for me, he was my shelter. He was my comfort. I bother with him because when my mother was sick and I had nobody else there to touch her, he was her healer. When I bother with him because if he didn't notice, they call us in a recession, but my tuition paid. I got more income coming in than coming out. I bother with him because when it was down to nothing and everybody counted me out and written me off, he took me from the streets to the pastor's office, from the pastor's office to the pews, and from the pews he put me on the pulpit and made me somebody's preacher. I bother with him because he's my miracle worker. I bother with him because he made a way. I don't know what I bother with him. Oh, if I can talk to Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, I bother with him till when I was born into the fire. I bother with him. Well, I bother with him. They said, why bother with him anymore than anybody in the house? You don't need a miracle, but you just got a memory inside of your mind of what God has done for you. And you need to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm still bothering with him. I, I still need him. I still need him. They sing a song. There, there's not another day I want to go without him. There's not another day that I want to live without Jesus. There's not another day I want to go without being in his presence. There's not another day because I know I can have all the money in the bank, but he still keeps me peace in mind. He's my mind regulator. He's my heart fixer. When I'm sick, he heals me. When I'm down, he picks me back up. I bother with him. And the Bible says Jesus heard it and ignored what they said because Jesus ain't hearing what everybody else is saying concerning you. And Jesus turned to Jairus and said, my brother, don't be afraid. Just believe. When he said to him, don't be afraid. Just believe because I know the enemy has some of the people in the house of God. He got you fearful, fretful, and he got you fragile right now. And you're looking at everybody saying, I don't want to come to church. I don't want to mess with the church folk no more because you're afraid of what they're going to say about about you, and you're afraid of the observation the enemy has on you. But I cannot tell you that Jesus said he ignored him. He said, I don't care what the devil says, because it ain't what the devil got to say concerning you. It's what I have to say about you. And to let you know, Jerry, I didn't give you a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. You got to understand, I know your hope is in me, and I'm going to make a way out of nowhere. And Jerry, if you didn't remember, I did say I was coming with you. I did say I was going to work it out for you. I I promise you I was going to work it out. It may be delayed, but it's not denied. I still promise you I was coming. Oh, come on, come on. I work this thing. And the Bible says, and the Bible says, and he did not let anyone else follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brothers of James. Because in this situation that I'm dealing with, I don't need everybody around me. I don't need all the people to walk with me. Because there are only certain people that can go to the next level with me. There are only certain people that can go to the with me. There are only certain people I'm not mad with all the folk that fall off of my life. I'm not mad with all the people God takes from me. Because when I think back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. So if you got to go, baby, then go. If you got to leave, then leave. If you got to remove yourself, please admit yourself. You are dismissed. Because I don't have time to be dealing with all of this. He only took a few people with him. And the 
Bible says, oh, I love this, part of the Bible says, and when he got to the house, he heard a loud commotion. He heard a lot of people crying, a lot of people screaming. Can I tell you right now that the devil at the point of your breakthrough is starting to make a lot of noise. He's starting to make a lot of commotion. He's trying to get you all stirred up. He's trying to get you all confused. But right at the break with Jesus and at the house, he said he heard a lot of commotion. That when God is the closest to you, it's when God is right around the corner. That's when everything, brother, I'm in the seat like it's falling apart. That's when you're hanging on my feet. But God sent me here to tell you. He said it's when they don't think you have enough. It's when they think that you're not strong enough. It's when they think they're all over. It's when they, they want to write you off. It's when they want you to throw the rag on you. It's when they count you out. That God said that's when I'm at the break for you. He said because this next time, you're not going to say mama did it. This time you're not going to say daddy did it. The child is not dead. Brother Chris, she just sleep. Which helped me to understand that you can't call it like you see it. Because I understand this. See, and the Bible said they laughed at him. Oh yeah, we have a lot of this. People just laughing. Because you don't understand the plan that God has for me. The plans are not of evil, but of good things to give me a well and expect it in. So they're laughing at me, brother. They're laughing at me because they see me falling. They see me hurting. They see me going through. So they're laughing at me. They're laughing at me. And they're laughing at my Savior. Because God said, my God, no eye has seen. No ear has heard but I. You have an entered into the heart of man. The thing that I have for you. And so I let them understand. It may look down and dirty. It may look messy. But in your mess, I create a man. Man, I create a message. In your mistakes, I'm able to make miracles. So you got to understand. It's not always good things. But God can take a bad thing. But 